Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of Milk Dogs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What we got planned today, Gage? We are going to be going over week five. It's already week five. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. We're doing waiver pickups and people who you might not want to start or just have on your roster in general. Oh, yeah. Well, let's get into it, then. First off, we're going to start off with waiver pickups. And I think uh, Jalil McLaughlin is a is a for sure person you need to try to pick up with uh, Javante Williams going down last week. We don't know how long he's going to be out, so he's definitely a safe bet to pick up to have start. Yeah, I mean, I thought Samaj P. Ryan would have for sure filled in this role, but he did not look good last week. This dude took everything, really. Yeah, I did. Well, he has, I mean, he's averaging 10 yards of <clears throat> an attempt. Yards after carry? Yeah. I know it only says 33% of the snaps, but Javante played like half the game, so. Yeah, I mean, I mean he's definitely, he's definitely, he's definitely someone that you need to pick up, put on your team for sure. Yeah. Definitely got potential. And he's a rookie, so if you're on Dynasty, who knows? Yeah, definitely somebody to look out for. But yeah. moving on, we got um someone from a, I don't know, kind of an underdog team. Oh, we yeah. got Michael Wilson. Plays for the Cardinals. He's also a rookie. You'll see a trend here. Uh, this dude looked great last week. I mean, the Cardinals look better and better every week. Do you agree? They are actually surprising me this year. I mean, I mean everybody, honestly. I mean, they literally thought that they were going to be the only ones to... Uh, they thought that the... They thought they were going to be the worst team. Yeah. I mean, everybody projected them to be the worst team in the league. They beat the Cowboys. They did beat the Cowboys. And they, I mean, they gave a good fight against the 49ers. Yeah. I was, I was actually surprised with that. And him, I mean, he's been out there. I mean, he's getting 70% of snaps now, Pretty good. which I so, mean, is good for so, a rookie. Yeah. I mean, wide receiver too. You still got Hollywood Brown taking in uh, almost 100% of the snaps. But this guy coming in here and getting seven targets, catching all seven. Yeah. And getting the two touchdowns. Pretty impressive, especially in a PPR format. Oh, yeah. I mean, those two touchdowns also, you know, they, they boost that stat line a little bit to help us they out. They do, they do. Oh, yeah. That, but moving on, let's get on this next guy here. Oh, that's oh. your guy. Oh, yeah, dude. Johnny Smith. Let's Johnny get him. Smith. He's on the Falcons, bro. And he's a, he's a for sure tight end. You know, he's got six years of experience. Watching the game over the weekend, I just feel like, Kyle Pitts is just somebody that is more of a wide receiver for the team. He plays he plays too far out. He's not he's not playing he's not playing the tight end position well. It's a hot take. Yeah. Would uh, you say would you say you would drop Kyle Pitts? Oh, I definitely I would definitely consider dropping Pitts because Desmond Ritter just looks Johnny's way. Johnny's more of his uh his security blanket than Kyle Pitts ever has been. Getting six targets, going for six for six. Tight ends are really hard to find right now. 95 so, yards with that. I mean, that's yeah. good. That's a good time right want. there. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Pitts. I still like the kid, though. I'm not going to lie. I mean, Pitts is good. I'm not going to lie. I mean, he's, he's athletic. It's just, yeah. yeah time just to, a bad situation, really. Yeah, time to, time to move on, I guess. Uh. This guy is not a rookie. You guys might know him, but Romeo Dobbs, I believe it's his second year, correct? Uh, yeah, it's his second year. Uh, Love just loves targeting him. What can I say? Yeah, Love just loves targeting him. Trey yeah. loves him, and so does Love. Yeah. No, I mean, Romeo Dobbs is awesome. I mean, I mean, even with even with Christian Watson coming back, he's still going to get he's still going to get a ton of targets. I mean, he was out there eighty eight percent of snaps, thirteen caught nine of them. Yeah, I mean, you can see the trend coming down. He, uh, I mean, he started out the season with a hamstring issue. That's why he was only in 48, 46% of the snaps. Even so, two touchdowns week one with the hammy? Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's just getting better and better every week. Him and him and Love are finding a good connection. We'll see what Watson does this uh, offense. Uh, they play this week, and they have a bye next week. So yeah. maybe Watson gets some more volume as we go on to week seven. But Dobbs still looks like a pretty good start option this week. Oh, yeah, for sure. He's definitely one of those ones that you can start. Yeah, I mean, multiple games of 18 points in fantasy is really good. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you can probably keep starting week in, week out. Just play it by ear. Yeah. 
What we got next, Tricky Trey? Oh, we got. I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit different here. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go defense. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah, we're gonna go no the Dolphins. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, we're gonna go with the Dolphins. You guys might ask why we're going with the defense. Like most leagues that I play in, I know not every league's the same. We get we get defenses, and the only reason I'm I'm giving a mention to the Dolphins is because the next two games they got the Giants, which we've seen them. Get slaughtered Monday. Wow. Seahawks and got 22 points on them. 32. A, they got 32? 32. They got 32 points on them. They had 11 sacks. And they had a touchdown, a pick six, and they That's had insane. two four two forced fumbles, one recovered. It was insane. That's a slaughter. Yeah. Daniel so, Jones, dude. Yeah, so I mean the Rough. next two games they got, they got the Giants and the Panthers, and they're just they're just not good teams right now. The Giants, they're they're in shambles. They don't know what they're doing. Rebuild team? No, nah, dude. They just pay. <laughs> they just pay Daniel Jones. It's not a rebuild time. I don't know what. It's they're over. Doing. It's <laughs> yeah. I mean, poor poor Aaron. <laughs> yeah, poor Aaron. Uh, another uh, another defense that you might want to pick up uh, are the Lions. They're playing the Panthers this week, so I don't yeah. know. Their defense is pretty solid overall. Like. Need a defense, so yeah. Just uh, check your options. Always check who they're playing. It's pretty important. A lot of people swap them in and out every week. Jamison Williams. I mean, he's a goat. I mean, as you can see, he's got he's got zero targets this year so far <laughs> because of the suspension. But you he know, did not really. I mean, he didn't do he didn't do okay. He did he did okay last year. I mean, but like he was a rookie last year. Yeah. So. And I mean, I'm and Ra on that team. This is definitely a, a good second second target for him. But we'll just see how it goes. I mean, he's definitely good to pick up and just put on your bench, maybe. Oh yeah. And just have him there. I mean, it never hurts to just have a bench rider anyway. Yeah. The the situation never gets better. I mean, easily a, a must start guy. I mean, you as you can see, he's only he's only ranked number eight hundred fifteen in the league right now. He's pretty solid. Pretty solid, but. He's rostered in fifty four, so yeah. Check your waivers, guys. He's still starting in seven. I don't know how that's possible. But I don't think they're playing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This next guy, though. Oh man, who's yeah. that? Lazard. Yeah, we we'll go with him. Oh dang. Yeah, we're gonna go. We're gonna go down here. Let me, let me just the... go down and find the man. Where is he? I pass him. Nope, I found him. Right yeah. here, Lazard. Yeah, we're gonna talk about a little bit about Lazard for a second. I mean, he's been in. I mean, as you can see, besides week one, he's been in over 80%, 86% of the snaps. He's just out there on the field. He's a constant player. He's just always trying to make plays, trying to help the run game. He's a good, He's a good. you know, fourth, third or fourth wide receiver, you know, if you're playing in a double flex league. I mean, with all these bye weeks coming up too, I mean, he's got the bye week seven. So, like, he could pretty – be a pretty good slot filler. I know we really talked a lot of crap uh, the first week we made, like the channel. We were talking a lot of crap on the the Jets. Yeah. But I mean Zach Wilson, something changed in him, man. They uh they did they did look good Sunday, and I mean they played the Chiefs. Like everybody everybody in the world thought they were gonna get blown out, but I mean they did they did solid. They they stood their ground. Alan Lazard, he just. You know, Garrett Wilson's going to be getting the cover. He's going right. to be getting covered the whole time. So, Alan Lazard being the wide receiver, too, he's going to be running open pretty much all the time. Like we've seen, you know, last week against the, the Chiefs, he made that big play down the field yeah, for a touchdown. That great cut, touchdown catch, too. That, that catch was really well yeah. really well done. I so. mean, he's got good hands. He's He is a good wide receiver, you know. I mean, you know. I always thought Aaron Rodgers was the reason he got good, but I mean he's he's been good since I mean as a Packer coming up, you know. Aaron uh, Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, this guy is sadly not on the Packers, but he's on a team that is near and dear to my heart. We got Curtis Samuel. He looked pretty solid last week. I mean, the whole Commanders team looked pretty solid last week. They played their hard out out there against the Eagles. Yeah. 
I mean, the fact that they're going against the Bears, he's definitely somebody you might be able to just pick up and start this week. Oh, yeah. The Bears' defense is so bad. It's just, I don't even know. You know, they're always, they're used to being, you know, this stout defense. Monsters of the Midwest. They look like the sissies of the Midwest this year. They got some high school players on that team, bro. (laughs) Oh, dude, yeah. I mean, uh, going into the Washington offense, I mean, you got uh, McLaurin, who's obviously the wide receiver one. Yeah. Going in the season, a lot of people really thought Jahan Dotson was going to be uh, wide receiver number two, take that next step. Yeah. But he really hasn't performed this season at all. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, I I mean, <laughs> right now to me, I feel like Curtis Samuel is the, is the wide receiver two. I mean, he's only playing about 65, 70% of snaps here. But, I mean, even without the touchdowns, like 11, 6, 7, and then out of nowhere, 18. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean, and his his targets started to trend back up after week after week two, you know, started going up. He got four and then eight. So, yeah. I mean, obviously Sam Howell sees something in him that he likes to see, even though Sam Howell's not that guy. But man, yeah, he got a. I mean, he he sees something in him. So ah. hey, at least Brian Robinson's pretty cool. Yeah. He's that guy. Michael Gallup. So. Dallas offense, everybody thought Brandon Cooks was going to be that number two overall wide receiver. And I would strongly disagree with him, considering Michael Gallup's been there. And he's still he's still getting a ton of targets. He's, he got seven last week. He got six this week. I mean, Dak obviously still, still trusts him. Oh, yeah. So... I feel like Michael Gallup is a solid pickup. I mean, he's only rostered on 23% of the leagues. I mean, yeah. that's that's not a lot. So he's out there. He's available. The only thing is, uh, going into this week five, he's playing against the 49ers. So yeah. I don't know how weary you should be of him because at the same time, Dak's still going to be getting that ball down the field. But uh, it's definitely something to take into consideration. Yeah, but you can see in that week six, they're going against Chargers. They ain't got a defense. We're coming back. Yeah. We got Eckler back that week. I hope. Yeah, that's debatable. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, he is not debatable. The next guy on our list. We got the one, the only, Tyler Boyd. Oh, it is not. Oh, no, there, there it is. is. Hello. Yeah. What's up, Tyler? <laughs> yeah. So, as we all know, Joey, Joey Burrow, Joe Burrow, JB, uh, He's not doing okay. His calf is destroyed. I don't know what's wrong with him. His arm broke too? I don't know. Listen, Cincinnati fans out there, if you can get a hold of us in the comments and let us know what happened to Joe Burrow, we would all love to know because he is missing. He is missing. Please find him. Yeah, please find him. We need to unsolve the mysteries. Music going on in the background right now because... We need to find him. And, uh, yeah. Tyler, you know who he's not having trouble finding? Yeah. Tyler Boyd. Within yeah. the last three <laughs> games, he's got eight, nine, and seven targets. Yeah. And you're you're probably thinking, oh, he declined to seven. I mean, Joey, Joe Burrow, he's not throwing it far down the field at all. If you've watched any of the games, he's throwing it max like 10 yards. And who's always there? Tyler Boyd. I mean, obviously not 10 yards because it says average yards per target is three last week, and the week before that was four. I'm saying Joey, <laughs> Joe Burrow hasn't thrown over uh, 10 yards yeah. since, he's, since he's been back this season. Yeah, it's just wild. I mean, like if, I mean, obviously that calf injury is doing more to him than we all know. I mean, his they calf. They are hiding it. His calf injury, uh, Cincinnati fans just booing him the whole game. I mean, what are you yeah. going to do? I have no idea what is going on there in Cincy. I mean, even having Chase, the only reason Chase has any upside right now is because he's getting so many of those targets. Yeah. Like, he's not getting touchdowns. He's getting, like, five yards per carry, if that. Yeah. Like, he's just, in PPR leagues, he's just getting so many points because he's getting, like, 15 targets out there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, with that being said, Tyler Boyd, you know, getting all these targets, I mean, somebody you might want to look get rid of is uh, T. Higgins. And he, he could not even be playing this week, so Tyler Boyd could be a start option, too. Oh, yeah. All right, Gage, let's go ahead and move on into the, into oh, the people, we should, yeah, people we should drop. 
Okay. All right. You want to start? You want me to? Yeah, you go ahead and start. All right. This guy, another wide receiver. I know we've been over a lot of wide receivers today. Yeah. But I mean, they're they're going up and down so fast in the league. I mean, you just you just never know. I mean, that's that's the thing with fantasy. You got to keep moving. You're always improving. You're kaizen in your situation. <laughs> I didn't constant, say that. constant improvement. Anyway, do you know who's not having constant improvement? <laughs> the whole offense over there. At the New England Patriots. Like, it's just not good. I Dude. mean, none of their wide receivers look startable at all. Honestly, ever since Juju had that whole incident of tiktok in the middle of people's logos, like, his, his, his career, I don't know why, it has been on a rapid decline. Hey, give him props last year. You know, he got uh-huh. a Super Bowl ring. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you know, got to give him props. Why did he get it? I mean, yeah. Why did he get it? Kadarius Tony came out of nowhere because he ain't he ain't there this year. But I don't think either one of them deserve a ring. But hey, uh, Juju Smith he has been a a mess. Like his targets went from seven to six to three to five. With those five targets last week, he caught one. I know it was against the the Dallas Cowboys, but I mean they're having quarterback crisis over. Oh there. yeah, I mean I mean the fact that. Bill Belichick's just sitting there ripping out, ripping out Mac Jones because he don't know what to do and throwing in Bailey Zappi, and he was just frustrated. Poor Zappi. <laughs> yeah, throwing him in there. I mean, just throwing out the. Belichick out the looked like meat. he was he was ready to just walk away after that game. Like he just wanted to retire. Yep. Well, going on to this next guy, this guy should retire. Ooh, well. Yeah. I don't know about that. He's pretty cool, I think. Yeah, but, uh, this guy right here should retire because he is not that guy. Mm. He's just not the guy. I mean, he just, you know, everybody thought with Eckler going down, oh man, this is going to be this going to be their next their next Eckler. You know, when Melvin Gordon got hurt, you know, Eckler was him. You know. So they thought jo- Joshua Kelly is this Austin Eckler 2.0? He's not. Listen, I'm the biggest Chargers fan in the world, but <laughs> but uh, you heard him, guys. You heard him. He's the biggest Chargers fan in the world. However, I know as well as everyone else who's not even a Chargers fan, we cannot run the ball without Eckler. Like we have uh, we have Spiller out there. He's not really doing much better. Uh, we have another rookie out there. I don't even know his name. I'm not gonna lie to you. Biggest Chargers fan though. Uh, it's like it's our practice squad, dude. Dude, the fact that he had 11 attempts for 12 yards against the Vikings, that is terrible. That is awful. It's my god. How did how do you guys keep this guy around? He needs to retire. 3 years, bub. Hey, salute you. You're out. I'm not going to lie. He's a pretty solid uh blocker, really. But that's all he's good for. <laughs> he just they would just throw him out there well, just give just... him a lineman <laughs> give him a lineman jersey and send him over to New York. The Giants need him. He honestly, he, he'd be a better tight end than a running back. Obviously, <laughs> Kyle Pitts freaking swap him, please, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, oh God. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. The drops, the drops here just get worse and worse. Everyone. So, oh. Not this guy. Aaron, we're friends, okay? But this guy ain't it. Yeah, Danny Dimes. Is Danny not the dimes? He's Danny loose change out here. He's not throwing anything but picks, turnovers. He looks like shit because his line is shit. So I mean, I can't, I can't sit there and blame him when he's running for his life back there the whole time. But dude, it is, it was ugly watching that game. That game? What do you mean? Every game this season. Minus the game he played against the Cardinals has been terrible. Dude, I have no idea what the Giants are gonna do. No, they're gonna they're gonna be the first round draft pick. That's what they're gonna do. Yeah. Well, that's kind of dumb because everybody gets a first round draft pick. Number. But continuing with with Danny Dimes, dude, I don't even know what to say about this guy. Like last year. He was he was pretty solid. I think he only threw like six or seven picks last year. Don't quote me on that. 
But this year already, he's got six in four weeks. That's what it looks like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, numbers are right in front of you. And a fumble. So, like, he's got seven turnovers by himself. A lost fumble. He's he's fumbled four times, but he lost one. Like, uh, I mean, and honestly, for him only fumbling twice, getting sacked 11 times, it's pretty impressive. I mean, whenever you're thinking fantasy, a lot of times you're thinking about a quarterback who not only can run the ball, but throw the ball really well. And this guy, last year was that guy. Like, he he's a solid runner. He's a big dude. Yeah. But this year, he can't even run the offense, let alone run the ball down the field. So. Yeah, I mean, and that has to do with, with the line. I mean, so it's not that the fact we're, run, we're, we're telling you Daniel Jones is really trash. He kind of is, but that offensive line is just bad. It is bad. I don't think I would start anyone off the Giants except for Saquon Barkley. I don't even know if I would start Saquon, honestly, at this point because I, that line. I wouldn't even start Darren Waller. I know tight ends are scarce, but if Daniel Jones can't do anything, then what's the point of starting Darren Waller? Yeah. I mean, I mean, he has no time to even let the – let the people make their routes because he's in such he's a, he's under such pressure. So, moment of silence for the Giants. Moving on. So, <laughs> uh, Wait, another guy we should be having a moment of silence for is this guy. We're split on this one. He's a rookie. J J S J S N Jackson Good job. Smith. Yeah. Jigba. Yeah. There you go, that guy. No, yeah, coming in, you know, all that's all you hear is all these Ohio State alumni. You got, you got Garrett Wilson. You had Chris Olave. You had all these guys sitting there saying Jackson Smith was the best receiver out of that group, and I don't see it. I don't think he's been given the chance yet. I think he's still someone. You can put on your bench. I wouldn't start him until the situation gets better. I mean, if we, if I know this is just projection, but if we move on, like towards the end of the season here, he's projected like 11 every week, which means that he's obviously going to keep getting more and more snap count. Uh, I know uh, during the Panthers game, the snap count went down, but I still think anything can happen. It's any given Sunday. And if Lockett or Metcalf go down, this guy instantly becomes a startable player. Honestly, that is the only way that guy becomes a startable player is if Metcalf or Lockett go down or both. Uh, you know, because, you know, watching the game against the Giants, he was open and he was throwing him the ball. He kept missing. You Drop know, it. Three, three drops. It was just, he's just not good to have. I, Me personally, I wouldn't want him. Last Lockett or Metcalf are out. Like if you're on a, if you have like a, a best ball team, like on underdog, you can use our promo code and underdog match your first deposit up to a hundred dollars. Code down below. But uh, in a best ball league, it'd be great to have, like especially towards the end of the year with all that upside. Yeah. But moving on to uh, some people who absolutely have no upside, in my opinion. Uh, I. I just can't tell you guys to start these guys ever. Like, I know these guys have been trending. Justice Hill, and we'll throw Gus Edwards in here too. Uh, I don't think you can start any running back from the Ravens. I don't think you can. I mean, I don't think you can either anymore because Lamar Jackson is just going to run it in. And he got two rushing touchdowns last week. I mean, Lamar's doing everything on that offense. They don't even need a running back. It's kind of sickening, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean... I mean, you're looking at the stats right here. No targets. He literally had three rushing attempts for 33 yards, which is, you know, 11 yards a carry. That's awesome. But he's only out there for 12% of the snaps. Get him out of here. Get him out. And yeah, then the and, other guy, yeah, Gus, Gus Edwards, Edwards. Let's move on to him, too, while we're here. I mean, he has barely been in the snap count either. I mean, the highest he's ever had this year was last week, 69%. What do you do with that? He got uh, 15 attempts for 48 yards. Yeah, three oh. yards a carry. Yeah, when you know, Hill had 
Hill had uh, 11 yards, you know, but he got the he got the majority of the snaps. I don't know who you know. I don't know who I would start on this team running back wise. I don't think you can, like he said. I don't think, I don't think you can. But uh, with that being said, we got we got another running back. You need to you probably need to get rid of because after watching this Toy Story game, which was solid by the way. Tyler Algier is not that guy. You know, you know, second year in the league, everybody was like, man, this guy's this guy's solid. You know, week one, he did solid. He was real good. But, you know, it's just been on a downward trend the whole time. You got Bijan there. You know, it sucks for this guy because he was solid. He's, he's, a, he's a good running back. He'd be good on another team. But he just gets the garbage time, really. Yeah. And, I mean, week one... Obviously, they didn't trust Bijan to get uh, a lot of the workload week one because he's a rookie. Yeah. And he, he broke out, dude. He got two touchdowns. He was three for three on receptions, 75 rushing yards. Yeah. Uh, I mean, week one, he was great. So if Bijan potentially goes down, again, it's one of those players you just, you just got to watch over time. But I don't yeah. think you're starting him ever. Yeah. I definitely, I would definitely get rid of him, honestly. I mean, look at that. Two, two targets, one reception, negative four yards in London. Like, in London. Yeah, like I just I don't think he's I don't think he's that good. I really don't. And it sucks to say that because he was good last year. But uh, going into my last running back here, uh, someone who's pretty solid last year, like Trey just said. Uh, going into this year, he just lost his role basically, and I don't think. I don't think he's even worth starting. I don't think he's worth having on the bench. I don't think he's worth just keeping at all. I, I think you should just get rid of the guy. I mean, it's Jarek McKinnon, in case you didn't see it. Uh, I mean, last not last week, uh, week three, he had the two receiving touchdowns, which literally saved you in fantasy. Yeah. However, like, the other four weeks, that they, or the three weeks that they played, I mean, two fantasy points, five, and then point seven last night. Yeah. For Sunday night, sorry. Yeah, Sunday night. Yeah. Like like he said, it's just, you know, Pacheco Pacheco's the guy. He's just he's the number one. The only the only way the only thing I'd pick him up in is a best ball league. Yeah. Just for the upside. The touchdown you know, upside. Yeah. You get him in you get him late in best ball leagues. But yeah, I mean he's nine years in, thirty one. He's he's past his prime in, in running back years about time for him to go ahead and hang up the hang up the cleats as they say yeah i just can't put faith in this guy but i mean the one good thing that came off of uh, the whole chiefs versus jets game was taylor swift let's go shout out to taylor swift big swifty over here i love 87 uh, i got my jersey coming in the mail and uh hope you guys do too she's saving football Please stop. Please stop. With that being <laughs> said, though, we will be stopping the video. That was terrible. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, turn bells on so you get fantasy uploads every time we do. You guys can get them right to your phone. I literally can cannot this believe. Whole part out right now. <laughs> nah. Now, this is solid. I just can't believe you literally brought in Taylor Swift when... No, she's doing nothing but becoming, becoming a nuisance. An icon. An icon. A nuisance to, to not the only league. pop, the football, and you know what else? Money. She's a money icon, dude. She brought she, so much revenue to the NFL just by going to the game. Let's go. She is a nuisance to the game. I am tired what? of seeing her on the screen. What? Well, um, this has been real. It's been great, but uh, we'll get you more coverage later this week. Yep. Thanks, guys. <laughs> See ya.